Eamon Khan here for Seconds Out with world champion Nick Ball in his home home city, Liverpool. Nick, good to see you. The homecoming you've been looking for. How are you feeling ahead of October 5th? Excited, yeah. Now that we're all here doing uh, the press conference and things like that. Yeah, it's getting um, getting real now and excited, yeah. In terms of coming back and having this homecoming fight, any sense of added pressure that, you know, you have to perform, you're the champion here. This is a city who's, you know, back champions and maybe needed someone like yourself to come through and take the mantle from other uh, former champions. Any sense of added pressure to perform in front of your hometown crowd? Not really, no. Just uh, continue to what I've always been doing, yeah. And no matter where it is or or what's in front of me, I'll I'll do that, yeah. I always I always deliver and always uh, put on a good fight for everyone watching. And I think if it is going to be like that, it's, it's only going to bring the best out of me because I've got the whole city behind me. So, yeah. Where does the belt sit within your household? To be honest, this this belt's a replica. I I I, I haven't even been delivered. You know, the the real belt, yeah. It hasn't been delivered. It's been ten weeks. The WBA still haven't delivered it, so I haven't, I haven't, um, I haven't got it yet. Surely you'll have it by October five, right? I want to, yeah. I sure, want to be defending it. So yeah, it needs to be here. Replica belt aside, there's an old adage in boxing that when you win a world title, it adds that extra couple of percent to your confidence, your game. You won't have had that fight just yet, but I mean, do you feel that? Do you feel that way that you? You've elevated in a sense to to a high level as a, as a fighter. Yeah, you're elevating each day and um, each fight. You're learning and, and things like that. So, yeah, you uh, listen to the the people around you. You know, keep doing what you've been doing to get you to this level. And yeah, keep going and you're learning with, with every fight and keep putting the work in. Yeah, and it all, it all pays off. It's some journey for yourself. Uh, essentially, you were brought in to you know, be this B-side fighter to Isaac Lowe and you totally ripped up the script there. Now you find yourself with that world title, earned that, deserved that. Um, I just heard you having a conversation previously with another interview saying about, you know, you've got to keep going and keep motivated. Were there moments where you felt like when you were trying to get that break that you felt maybe this won't come for me and, you know, I might just have to keep trying to take these fights to really kind of push my way through? Yeah, they, they can creep in, yeah. They can creep in. It's, it's only normal, isn't it? You know, I'd be lying if I said, them, them thoughts don't keep in, but you can't start feeling sorry for yourself and um, saying, oh, I'm not getting my chance now. You've got to, you've got to earn your chance. You've got to keep putting the work in. And if you feel like that, just go back to the gym, get back on the road, you know, yeah. Keep running up the miles and um, make sure you're earning. I feel like I've always done that. And that's the always way it, it, it's, it's got to be. Um, you, you, uh, you get out what you put in and I've definitely been doing that. With this homecoming fight, look, there was some obviously talk about it potentially being Jazza Dickens in the opposite corner. If Jazza Dickens had kind of built his record a bit more and had those wins, would would he have been the ideal opponent for you? Do you think? I'm not too sure. You know, yeah, I've got an, um, a, a manager, um, promoted him, Frank Warren, who who handles all that. I'm ready to just you know fight, mm. yeah, F fight anyone they put in front of me, and you know, the good the coming now as a world champion, they're coming to. To take, take mine, Andy. Take, take what, uh, what's mine and what have worked so hard for me, all, my whole career to, to get to this point. They're gonna try and take it away from me, and I'm gonna show them that's not the case. That's not happening. Do you are you a type of fighter who watches a lot of tape on your opponents? And have you done that with one of Rios heading into this fight? No, I don't really do that. Yeah, I let uh, my coaches Paul and Andy do that, and uh, I just get in on the night and see what they're saying on the night. When it comes to you as a fighter, look, obviously the way you fight and the aggressive type of style, entertaining type of style, looking for those finishes gets talked about a lot. But do you feel that you get the credit for, you know, setting up those punches, using your boxing brain to get in those positions and, and find those gaps uh, in your opponent? Yeah, every opponent's different, but yeah, you've got to um, take them as they come, see, see what see what the, what the style is when, when you're in the ring with them and be the best version of yourself, you know, in, in there always and, and not worrying about them you know, focusing on, on you and, and seeing what you can do to them and getting the, getting the moves off. But every opponent is different. You can do certain things with some opponents, what you can't do with others. So it's good to always keep fighting the different ones. There's a huge fight in the division in the form of Lopez versus Angelo Leo. A uh, couple of people, I think even Shakur Stevenson was picking Angelo Leo to get that victory and he did it in emphatic style. What did you think of that finish? Good knockout, yeah. Yeah, it was a... It was a good knockout. It was there to be. It was there to happen. To be honest, it was always going to happen. I, I, I believe, you know, he's as much as he's a good fighter, Lopez. He's uh, his hands down, chin up, and he come in with a lazy jab. And 
and you can't really do that at that level. You can't do it at any level. This is this is a uh, boxing, you know, with eight ounce gloves and anything can happen, and you got knocked out. In terms of you looking for unification fights, does Vargas stand as that fight that you want most because of the way it ended with you feeling and a lot of people feeling that you won that fight? Do you want that second bite to prove and, and show without a doubt that you're the better of the two? Yeah, 100%, yeah. I need to uh, get that bell because it should be on this other shoulder with me, really, shouldn't it? But mm. yeah, that's um, a bad decision. Everyone, everyone knew, knew what happened, but... Yeah, I'm sure down the line we can make it happen. Was there any conversation about getting that fight uh, again before Rios at all? Don't, I don't, I don't think so. I don't really think he wanted it. I don't really know what what he's gonna do. There's another fight that I like as well too. Is on the climb up. I wonder if you've been keeping your eye on him, Bruce Shushu Carrington. Uh, you and him sounds like an exciting prospect. You and anyone, to be fair, you're the yeah. you're the great side to any equation with any of these fights there. But have you kept your eye on Shushu at all? Not really. No, I don't. Um, I don't really keep my eye on anyone, but um, myself and the, the the people I'm around in the gym, the lads, the lads in the gym. That's all I'm focused on, to be honest. I don't really focus on anyone else. If you start doing that too much, then you're gonna take the eye off the ball for yourself. So focus on myself, yeah. And um, as I said, keep putting the hard work in every day. You could get your thoughts on a couple of other things uh, in the wider sphere of boxing. First of all, at the top of uh, the heavyweight division, we're creeping closer to Joshua versus Dubois. Who do you favour in that fight? And um, who you, when they're talking about bigger punches out of the two of them, you're yourself a bigger puncher. When you look at the way they throw punches, can you tell who actually lands heavier than the other fighter? Not really. With, with, that, with that fight, anything can happen. Especially, it's heavyweight boxing in it. You know, anything can happen. So it only takes one shot. But um, I feel like that one's going to be an exciting fight. I feel like from from the start, they weren't going to come out with a point to prove. And I feel like with the styles, it, it's, it's going to go off, yeah. I feel like it's, uh, that's going to be an exciting one, yeah. And I'm looking forward to it. So made the best man win. Who do you back? I'm back in uh, Dubai. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, Dubai, I've spent... Um, a bit of time with him. He's a uh, team Queensbury as well, you know. So it'd be wrong not to. Yeah, it's in on that, you said you spent a bit of time with him. What was the time that you spent with him? Yeah, yeah. Um, just you know, out in um, out in Saudi, okay. things like that. We've been um, been on the same show, so all like the the promotion things leading up, and and things like that. Yeah, and he's he's um, he's team Queensbury, isn't he? So we're we're on the same um, same promotion. When it comes to fighters at the higher weights as a smaller weight fighter either on the come up or even now do you look at those fighters and take a bit of their game at all or is it because they're at heavyweights you know they don't they can't do what you do specifically so you don't look at you look at maybe at the lower weights so maybe nick a few things from at all um is is heavyweight something you look at to kind of take a little bits of other people's game from yeah i actually train with him um, alongside bomber brown yeah i actually train alongside him so I'm I'm looking at him on the back and um yes Frank. Right, champ. Right, yeah. the man. <laughs> so um yeah, I'm I'm next to him on the back and I'm I'm looking at him thinking I want to punch as, as hard as him. Mm -hmm. And he's probably looking at me thinking I, I want to be as uh, as fast as Nick. Mm -hmm. And th that's where we help each other, we bounce off each other like that in the gym. So Bomber Brown, he's a heavy hitter and um he's he's going to show that and yeah, I'm always looking looking up to him. You know, thinking I'm trying to punch like him. He's making a bag bang like that. I want to make the bag bang like that. So yeah, we do. We do look at the fighters and be like, yeah, take little parts from their game and put them into ours always. You're in a super exciting fight and you definitely earned your opportunities. But I wonder, is this Liverpool show, you main event in this, the start of more? Or do you reckon you end up being like bouncing back and forth and having a few Saudi fights as well too? I'm not too sure, to be honest, what, whatever happens, yeah. But with this one, I'm just... Um, Again, taking each fight as it comes, and this is a special one for me because I've become world champion. I'm defending it in my home city. What more do you want? Yeah, everyone's going to be there, support me. It's going to be a special night. All the lads from the gym are on it, so it's going to be next level. Nick, leave a fine word with you. What happens in your fight with Ronnie Rios? You know, all action again from from me and um, explosive performance. I I feel like it's coming. Pleasure. Thanks for your time, sir. Good man.